Today kicks off Hispanic Heritage Month, and for the past three years, our next guest embarked on a journey to capture the lifestyle of charreria, a traditional practice and sport of livestock herding. From the state of Washington to southern Mexico, we aim to understand the Mexican national sport and what it means to the people on both sides of the border. Documentary photographer and filmmaker Diego Huerta joining me now. Diego, uh, good to have you here. So tell us, what did you learn on this journey and how do you feel the sport this charreria differs on each side of the border. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And and yes, uh, as you say, uh, for me as a creator of these uh, documentaries, it's very important to talk about uh, the charreria in both sides of the border, in Mexico and the United States. Uh, Charros y Escaramuzas uh, is an effort of three years of production traveling uh, through different states in Mexico and the United States, the importance of uh, these docu-series is to show a culture more than uh, 100 years uh, that is considered a world heritage site. Charreria is considered the national sport of Mexico, but uh, more than a sport, is a culture that I share with the uh, United States in 14 states in the American Union. Talk to me about the importance of this sport when it comes to the Mexican economy. How sort of intertwined are those two things, Diego? Yeah, for me, uh, more than projecting a country, uh, I'm from uh, Monterrey, Mexico, uh, but more than projecting a, a, a specific country like Mexico, uh, my desire is to project uh, the wealth that we have uh, as a humanity because the charreria, although it is a Mexican tradition, uh, has no how to adapt in the United States. And perhaps tomorrow the charreria will reach other countries. Uh, I'm proud to partner with uh, Ornita Esquila, who has uh, support my, my docu documentary, uh, because we share values like inclusivity and, and collaborations. Now, I know you took on a big challenge here when you made this film, part of making of this film happened during the pandemic. Um, we had the borders yes. closed between Mexico and the US during that time. What? How were you able to get this film made during COVID? Yeah, uh, filming a docu-series in times of pandemic was a great challenge, but uh, thanks to the fact that I can do everything myself. I'm, I'm travel alone. Uh, I could carry out this uh, docu series with all the necessary sanitary measures. So for me, it was a, a, a big, big challenge. I want to talk for a moment about Latinos and their representation in film uh, because I looked up some stats and um, they're not great, Diego, but I think you already know this 3.6%. Uh, of uh, filmmakers or, and directors are Latino. And on television, just five and a half percent of all those we see on TV are Latino. So what more can be done to support Latinos in filmmaking and television? I think for the Latino community around the United States, it's too important to uh, give the opportunity to the new generation to not just to paint to the United States and, and, and try to find a, a better lifestyle through the work, through the hard work. Uh, I think the Latino community have a lot of uh, potential creativity, uh, creativity uh, and, and I think it's important to encourage to the young people, to the new generation to, to start uh, creating through the a lot of time, a, a lot of kind of art, like a film, like a art, a, like painting, like music, I think it's important to encourage the new generation to, to bring all that uh, creativity. Well, the, uh, the film is definitely a labor of love. Diego Huerta, documentary photographer and filmmaker, thank you so much for being with us here to kick off Hispanic Heritage Month. 